Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So we are uh, taking a little day off here Thanksgiving. So I recorded this video yesterday. So I hope that you guys all have a great Thanksgiving. Um, uh, what I wanted to do today, just something very quick, very easy, an upgrade to the office. Um, I got in my gigabit ethernet switch. So uh, I went with the D-Link model and this is the DGS-108. And uh, I want to talk about why I went with this model and, uh, you know, what I'm using this one for. Um, now, I have my office, obviously, I have multiple computers. And right now, I have a router with four ports and I have another four port switch. Everything is taken. Um, within a short period of time, I will be finally deploying my PFSense router, which actually cuts me down to three ports. Uh, instead of four ports and so I needed to get something else to increase the the switch but the other challenge that I had is that the current switch that I have and the current modem or uh, the, excuse me the current router that I have are also only 10 100 ports rather than gigabit ports and right now while my modem was just upgraded last week to be a gigabit modem having a, the gigabit port and supporting much higher speeds the fact of the number of computers that I have all connected to you know eight different ports on 10 100 is really the the bottleneck for my network right now so this is one of the uh one of the devices i'm going to be using which is going to increase my ports i should actually have some empty ports by the time this guy's deployed and then uh, i'm going to reroute a couple little things so that my Currently, my for my Raspberry Pi Media Cody Media Center to be on, I actually have to have the switch on, but I rewired the office so that while I'm not in here working, two of the three power strips in this office can be turned off. And so I'm going to reroute the Raspberry Pi all the way across the room over directly into the router so that that's always on because the router is always on. And then the switch is going to take care of all the rest of the computer. So just a little bit of a little bit more adjustments. But the reason I went with this, so the D-Link model happens to have a few different things. And I'm on my, I'm on a different camera system this time. So uh, pardon me for that. Um, so this model here, uh, I went with this. I bought it. They didn't give it to me or anything. Um, so they have in this series, they have the um, high speed Ethernet or they have the gigabit speeds. So I'm, I believe that the high speed e Ethernet are, are 10 100 ports and they have a five port and an eight port model of that. And then this is the DGS. There's the DGS 105 and 108, which is the, the five the, the five port and the eight port. Now, of course, when we talk about five port, eight port, et cetera, et cetera, usually uh, what that means on a switch is that one of your ports is always going to be your input. And so what, however many ports it has, so this one down here that I have, I said it's a four port, it's a five port. You know, I say four port because there's four usable ports to expand it. And so this guy will have seven additional usable ports after I use one of them for the input from the router. All right. Now, the reason I went with this model, there's a few things and I researched several different switches. Now, um, one factor is going for is what is the general power consumption. That's something to keep in mind. As you're running more and more devices, you want to make sure that you're not having devices that have super high power consumptions. And so that's one of the things I looked at. And, uh, you know, some of these ranged for the ones without fans, usually hovered around five watts or so. And then for the, the higher ones, you know, the ones with fans, you usually get around 10 or 15 and sometimes up to 20 watts. Um, and so you have that. Now you also have a managed and an unmanaged switch option. This is an unmanaged switch, which means all this does is basically adds ports to the router. So it's not going to interfere with any of that. And I don't need anything more than that. I still want my router to manage all of that. And so that is uh, another reason I went with this. Now this one here does not have a fan, uh, so it's a lower watt, and this one happens to be one of the lower wattages I've seen, where according to the power supply source, it says it's about 5 watts, but according to the technical specs, it's actually down as low as 3 watts. And I wanted to get whatever I could that will keep my wattage as low as possible so I'm not fighting with wattage as I'm, as I'm doing stuff. And so uh, it's just whatever I can, it's going, to, uh, it's going to, to use less power. And so um, the next reason I went with this one is because it was a brand I'm aware of. Uh, I went to the local stores to see if any of the local stores would have anything. Um, Netgear 
was the only one I could get from Staples. Um, I've really never had good luck with Netgear equipment. It just doesn't, not high quality. Um, and then the local computer store, they had another brand, but I've never heard of what that brand is. And it's a much larger, and it was double the price, and it was about double the wattage. And so I wasn't about to do that. So I paid about, I think, 30 bucks for this. Again, I got it on Amazon. I'm still paying with cash on Amazon. I knew what I wanted. I did the research, dropped it in my cart, went out to the local store, dropped cash, filled up my uh, gift card balance, and then uh, with my gift card balance filled up, then, uh, then what I did is... Uh, place the order right there before I left the store where I filled it up and then this guy came and that was actually last week this guy just came in today so um, it was uh, it was a good device so we're gonna go ahead and uh, open this guy up see what we find and do this now I already did open it up a little bit just to make sure I could uh, get the the port counts and things like that you know just look everything over make sure nothing's broken so Inside here we have um, warranty card and the the Gare Distributo Repedi. I don't know if I said that right, but it's a quick install guy. Um, so of course this would cover the both the five port and the and the eight ports. So this one of course is the eight port. Uh, like I said, this one's like thirty bucks. I think you get the five port for like twenty bucks if you're looking for something else in there. There's also a wall mounting kit, a power adapter, and then there's just a whole bunch of stuff that uh, if you're doing this, you probably know what it is. So you can probably just do side do without that. <laughs> Here's the power strip, and uh, the power strip. This is you know five volt one amp. Hey, this would be power perfect power Raspberry Pi if it had a better ending on it. <laughs> All right, um, and then here is the switch itself, and then we have our mounting screws. So inside of this guy here, I have two mounting screws uh, with drywall mounts, and I also have uh, basically some rubber stoppers I can use here, so I can peel these off and put the rubber stoppers on, on the bottom of the, of the device. So we're going to go ahead and open this up here. So we have a very solid um, metal casing, so it does feel very rigid. It's uh, quite solid, and uh, we have a ground switch there. We have our power input. We have a lock here, and then here is the wall mounting. Now, for me, for mounting this guy, I don't want to mount it directly to the wall, especially when I run a lot of my cable management is actually lined on my uh, on my desk down here, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so what I actually did is um, I created one of these, or two of these devices really, um, one for uh, each side of this, and then basically I just have a nut, a washer in here so that this guy here, as it mounts in here, it will kind of slide in, and then the washer will uh, go solid against the device here so I don't get any wear on that, hopefully. Uh, and then I have a nut, which is going to keep the... Uh, it's going to basically keep it in here and keep this guy tight so that I don't have any play in the screw. So that's what that one does. And then that's also going to act as the back end. I have two washers uh, for protection and then a third nut, uh, a second nut, excuse me, um, to connect that. And then what I did is I came down and I drilled holes in my desk uh, so that um, I could actually mount it on that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on a headlamp so we have some light down there and I'll show you what's uh, underneath the desk down here. Okay, so down here is down the desk. There's the big beastie computer there for video production. This is one of the two power strips that turns off. This one only operates the Mac, which is sitting there, the Mac for the monitor, and that monitor is actually shared between the Mac and the other computer. So this power strip runs that. Um, and uh, of course the computer speakers which are also shared in between with this little adapter here. Um, down, down over here this is the Lenovo which is my main media PC and then this is the old switch we're gonna take out and usually I, I actually have that up with zip ties. I have uh, I apparently have stock in zip tie. I have hundreds of thousands of them. <laughs> I don't actually have stock in them but a friend of mine sent me um, sent me a bunch of soldering gear and um, uh, he used zip ties as the whole packing. <laughs> So you can see I do my cable management just by using zip ties, uh, tying all of the wiring to the back of the desk so that nothing is on the floor. This just 
fell on the floor. It actually usually sits right up here. That fell as I was down here working. So what I did here is this desk here is, um, you know, cheap particle board, but it's um, a very nice sturdy metal desk. And so what I did here is I, um, I uh, used some, uh, a metal drill here and I drilled some holes in there. So a good tip on how to do that is you take the bottom of your device and you take a piece of paper and then you just line your piece of paper over here and you can either trace or, or poke a hole or whatever else where, where both your holes are. And then you just take that and I actually taped that up to the, uh, to the desk here and then drilled these in and then I mounted those screws in there so you can see what these look like. Uh, maybe. Okay, so you can see in the back here, uh, these guys are in there and then the two bolts there and then we have um, this guy down here, which is going to act as a good uh, good base for the back of the back of the device. So what we're going to do now is I want to actually I'm going to I'm going to put it down uh, down this way so the ports are going to be down. And the reason I want to do that is I don't want any dust falling in the top of the ports. So that could actually mess some things up. I could probably find some port caps and cap everything, um, but I don't have any of those right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, uh, and do it this way. So now the way I have this, hopefully I can do this with one hand, and you can see, um, nothing surprising here. I'm just attaching it to the back. I cannot do that with one hand. I gotta set the phone down. So I went ahead and did that. Now, hey, it even says D-Link, really nice, right there. So then I have my power port here. I have all my port switches down here. And so now I just need to plug this guy in. So I do try and keep the uh, all my cables nice and managed, you'll see. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna see what my distance is. And it actually looks like it's gonna be that back port there. So I'm actually gonna pull out just, um, I'm gonna pull out probably just one one strand of this is what I'm gonna do um, and just so that as much of this stays wrapped up as I possibly can so let me do that and we're gonna do one more it looks like And one more. I just happen to know that this is going to be sitting on the, uh, uh, I don't want to pull the cord the opposite way because the way it has to sit, it's going to have to sit plugged in this way and I don't want, I want there to be enough pull that this is not on this side. I don't want it to be pulled out too much. So we're just going to make sure this guy's tightened back up so I'm not losing any of that. And now we're just going to go ahead and swap my switches out. Okay, so I had a problem with the power strip. Um, you know, some power strips will have it uh, uh, have the um, strips going the other direction. This one has them going this way. So, like, if you see this one, the uh, the alignments are a different direction. And uh, the way this is, and I guess maybe a downside of that switch is the power adapter is so big it would take up two spots in one of these uh, just to be plugged into the very end. And since that's already at capacity. You know, I really had to um, I really had to make some adjustments so actually I, I had another power strip in the other room so I pulled that off um, pulled this one off I'm actually gonna mount this one over here because that one doesn't run at capacity and the switch on this is broken and uh, so this one here that way I can uh, just shut it off at the switch rather than um, uh, rather than unplugging them all um, and then uh, here is the network switch plugged in and so everything's working fine. So this uh, blue wire is the one coming in from the router. Uh, this goes over to the Mac. This is the uh, Windows PC. This is the uh, Media PC. And this is the Raspberry Pi Cody Center. And then I still have, it looks like, I don't know, three or four ports open. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So I have three ports open left down there at the bottom. 
And so it's all nicely in there, nicely uh, cable managed, and uh, that is that is done. So now I, uh, I you know, I'm still not going to notice a, a tremendous bump in speed right now until I replace the modem with uh, the Gigabit modem. Uh, but this is uh, this is definitely a step in the right direction. Cleans up the office a little bit and looks a whole lot nicer than the old system I had set up. Uh, it's extremely sturdy on here. Um, just that's the, owing itself to the the nut and the washer that I used. Just kind of tightened it down so it'd slide down there a little bit rigidly. So you know even if I hit hit up on this guy, like the one side will go up a little bit more, the other side it won't. But it's. Uh, uh, it's extremely rigid. It's not going anywhere. So, so there it is. There's the new switch put into the office and uh, that is that is that. So I'll let you guys know in a few months if that has any problems or if that's working, how that's working, things like that. So thanks for watching. Enjoy your Thanksgiving and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.